What's up, everybody? Davosaurus here. So this is going to be a continuation of our Welcome to Tarkov series. This is going to be Welcome to Tarkov 102. Uh, so what that means is that if you are not new to shooters or not new to Escape from Tarkov, this video really isn't for you. Um, there's no reason to waste my time. There's no reason to waste your time. Go with something else. Literally anything else. Otherwise, let's get into it. Awesome. So with that, I also wanted to have a little bit of to kind of a to recover the important parts that are going to matter for this video. So with that, we're going to actually go to our inventory. And so from here, we are going in with the bare basic loadout. So we've got a backpack, we've got our AK, we've got our one extra mag. And that's really it. There's really not much more that we're going to take in here. We're going to take in some meds. So one and two, or how I t how I like to do it, is four, five, zero. And with my stims, if I had any stims, on six. Um, and so, yeah, so we're good to go from here. So what this video is going to be about is taking our PMC onto customs as an offline raid. So this is going to be walking and talking through what is customs, how do I walk through the map, how do I do the map, um, and different things that come to my mind, things to be aware of for your first run. So just to be aware of, we have no headphones, we have no helmet, we have no armor. We only have basic meds, we have an unmodified weapon here. So we're not, I don't want to, I didn't recommend at least in the 101 video, I didn't recommend you just go and into a map you don't know with no map or anything. So basically we're gonna recover what is offline mode and the different parts here, and then my typical configuration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable offline mode. So this means that we get to go any map with all of the loot that we have on us. And if we die, then we lose nothing. And if we survive, then we gain nothing. This is quite literally just for us to walk around the map, to get used to a weapon, um, to learn the game, to practice as a warm up, anything. Now, the, if you enable PVP or PVE, sorry, PVE, this means it'll put bots on the map. So we're gonna make sure our AI difficulty is as online. We're gonna keep the AI amount as as online. So it's something that you would get used to the typical amount of scabs as you would see online. We're gonna turn on bosses because Rishala is, is a scav boss, which is gonna be covered in a, in a later video. He has better loot, better AI, and he's got cronies and they're all kind of scumbags. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna turn on enable bosses I like to turn on scab war. For this instance, um, we are going to turn on scab war because it's going to be your first experience in learning what a uh, what a busy customs map sounds like. There's shots everywhere. There's stuff happening all around the map, so it's a good thing to get used to. Now we're not going to turn on tagged and cursed. But what Tagged and Curse does is this would make all of the scabs know exactly where you are at all times. And they will basically, they will continue to push where your position is, wherever you are on the map, until you die. Now, we are not going to turn on random time and we are not going to turn on random weather conditions because random weather conditions is going to basically say, all right, is it raining? Is it foggy? Is it sunny? Is it overcast? What have you? Not interested in dealing with that. And then random time can basically be night, day, dusk, dawn, anything. I want it to be early morning on customs. Offline with bosses. Scabs all fighting each other. Normal amount of scabs. Normal difficulty. And from there, we would just press ready. Awesome. So as we're loading in here, you'll notice now my face is gone. And the reason why I wanted to do that is so that you could see where, you know, everything that's going on on the screen here. So that means including my stance indicator. That can be my stamina. There's two bars, as you'll notice on the bot very, very bottom left corner as I run and as I jump here. 
how it um how they change the green is your leg stamina and the blue is your arm stamina so even if you sprint all of your stamina away you can still walk in ads but if you if you aid down aim down sight or ads for too long then you lose all of your arm stamina but you can still sprint that's a relatively recent change it's a very very nice change in my personal opinion got no real complaints so where we spawned here this is uh, one of the extracts. So we are in the, well, actually, it gave us the trailer park exit. That's not normally how that works. So when you play on a map that has multiple extracts like customs, you will spawn on the opposite side of the map. And well, you'll have your extracts, sorry, on the opposite side of the map. So you have to cross the map to extract. The only exceptions to that are ZB013 and Dorm's V exit or Dorm's vehicle exit. Uh, those are basically halfway through the point in the map on either side. And so from there, you can basically, if you can, if you have money for the vehicle extract or if there are certain conditions and if you have a certain key, you can extract halfway through the map uh, almost entirely in a line with one another, cutting the map in half. So for us specifically, what we want to do here is we want to continue moving through. So my friends and I call this area Hobo Camp. You can get on top of Hobo Camp by jumping, if you have high enough strength, uh, on top of this blue guy, and then on top of this door cover. If I can, if I can jump, I apologize. Oh my God, how do I jump? There we go. And then jump on top. Now, if you have higher strength, you will jump higher, but also if you look up when jumping, then you also jump higher, which is kind of silly. It's almost like Yoshi trying to jump, you know? But I'm not going to walk around the outside, personally. So, I'm going to make sure my weapon is in full auto. I press the B key to do that by default. I can press Shift T to check and see if there's uh, a bullet or a round inside my, my chamber, in which there is. You can press Alt T to check your mag and see if it's full. And I usually like to check any shelves and stuff like this. What you'll notice when you're playing Tarkov is loot just kind of looks like it belongs there. They do a pretty decent job at making it blend in. So it's never a bad idea to check any and all shelving, um, checking car doors and um, checking, you know, on here and stuff like that. It, they do a good job at putting things where it would logically make sense. Sometimes. Not everything makes sense. Trust me. So, as we are moving around through Hobo Camp, my car doesn't have anything. It doesn't look like there's anything inside. We can continue moving. So, in here, the reason why I typically check this when I am on this side of the map is because gym bags or duffel bags, as you can see, the weapon type or the type here, can spawn anything. Like, for instance, this military power filter. Um, this you need for good trade-ins. This uh, will sell well. And if you had the flea market, it's actually worth uh, like 60, 70 K rubles. It's not the most expensive thing in the world, but 60 K can, can, can be good ammo. Now, typically inside this, uh, I guess it's called a lotta, maybe? Um, and inside this car, there's a medical bag and typically some sort of food. So I'll check the med bag because you always check the med bag. Drop the soap because what else are we going to do? Um, and now you see how these say pile of meds? You can use these to craft things in your hideout. If you remember, we went over that a little bit in, one oh, in the 101 video. So... Um, we can hop through this, which is it's a little awkward, but the only other things that I would typically check when moving around through Hobo Camp, um, directly ahead of us, inside that red uh, container or connex, there is a jacket to check for keys, and there's a weapons crate to check for weapons mods, uh, guns, and then ammo and magazines and the like. 
Some of these will have nothing in them, as you'll probably notice. Some of them will have stuff in them. Some of the some of these will be open and have holes in the wall so that you can get through. It's quite interesting. Excuse me. There's there's quite a bit that you can do. There's our first scav. There you go. Night night, bud. Cool. So we're gonna check this. Nothing? Interesting. And then we're gonna check this guy. Nice. So you see now we have another mag. This mag actually can go into our AK here. The reason why I know that um, is these are both uh, 6L20s, or this is a tan or an orange one, so it's 2-0 and this is 2-3. They both fit 545 by 39, so it's a Russian in intermediary cartridge. And what we can do is, you see how I did it uh, to the, the orange one first? We can actually click and drag ammo that we have on us, as long as it's the correct caliber, into magazines. And now you can spend the next 15 or so seconds, quite literally, um, repacking your mag in red. So it's always, if you have the extra space, it's always a good idea to bring extra ammo. Especially if I typically run 30 round mags, so instead of running 60s, which is not the most realistic, quote unquote, if you're going to be, you know, a shill about it, um, bringing 30s and then having extra ammo to pack your mags is, is something that would happen more often than, you know, bringing big, huge, you know, 60 rounders, 100 rounders, things like that. Also, people will typically bring four ammo but i digress cool so from here we can ransack this guy's body and then take everything on him i want a shotgun so i'm just gonna take the shotgun so if i press control left click it automatically goes onto my person now i can always click and drag but the actual control click is faster it'll put it into a slot in which it could potentially satisfy like ammo would go into your tactical regular pockets uh, meds and food would go into your backpack, and if this guy had any money, it would go immediately into our pouch. So the nice thing about this, this is Big Red. Um, typically online, I would be dead by now because this place is crawling with PMCs, typically. So the best thing about this area is we have these two blue containers on either entrance. Either major entrance. Hello. Honey? Later, bud. So, in here, there's a med spawn. Um, there are drawers here. You can search them. They have a good chance of spawning everything and anything you're going to need for, like, a lot of the weird uh, BS collection quests. Or they have a chance of spawning uh, really rare and good expensive items. It's a good... If you have the time, my recommendation is that you do check them. All right. So, once we're inside Big Red here... There, you need a key to get in there, and obviously on this account we don't have that key. Uh, that's Customs Office. You'll have a few quests you have to get there. But inside this building alone, there's three weapon boxes? One. Uh, should be, I think, two, and then three. There should be three on this level alone. So one in this back here looks like a this big collection of green crates. Yep, there you are. And there should be another one somewhere around here. I don't come into here very often because I typically die. So, the reason why that's so important, or the reason why a lot, of, a lot of people will stay here in this area, because of the decent PvP, but also because in up in Custom's office, there is a safe, three computers, two gym bags? One gym bag. So there's a lot of good stuff that can spawn there. There's also a few quests that you need to go and pick up stuff or go drop off stuff. It's usually never a place to go to. Now, unless you have to, or if you're looking for, if you spawn over here and you're feeling, and you're feeling froggy, of course. So this is the other blue. This is the other main entrance. And so there's a weapons crate. There's four stacks or four drawers, and then we have another gym bag. 
so now I am going to actually go through what is called what is what is considered normal, um, or what used to be customs. There there was an expansion. We'll cover that in, in a separate kind of add-on video for customs on an offline run, in which we go through the different areas and places you could fight things and all of that. What 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 could spawn there? But for this specific video, we're just going to treat this as if the new area didn't exist. I wonder if I can hit this guy. I doubt it. Yeah. Um, and then we will go from there. So we are on the other side of Big Red at this point. There is uh, a river that actually kind of cuts um, this third of the map off from the rest of the map. There's four different... Uh, bridges you can cross. There's like land bridge, land bridge, real bridge, and there's like shanty bridge all the way on the other side. And um, I'll show you guys that when we run that direction. So, right now we are coming up on the actual official welcome to Tarkov image. That's where we got it from. Um, scavs like to spawn here. Players traverse this area quite a bit. It's quite popular here. A lot of that shooting you're hearing right now is over in that big skeletal building. Once again, that's in the new area that uh, we'll be getting to in a different video or a later video. Oh, on your AK, my friend. Cool. So the reason being is that it shoots the same caliber, but I think it's got better irons. Come back here back here die scab you fucking cunt got him scab down where are you all the all the oxen free fuck <laughs> you're good son of a all the all the oxen free honey it's one all right. Well, I don't know where Neo went. That works. All right. Beautiful. So, where we are currently, is we are outside of... So, this is actually construction. So, construction, you'll have a beginning quest, which you need to grab a golden key or a, a golden locket and need to safely extract. Um, this is another area of a lot of PvP, a lot of... You know pve um, there's a lot of people that will rotate through this area to get down into the new portion of customs or if they're trying to cut through they'll cut through construction to go up towards storms which is where we're going to go this is this is a place where you want to be if you're looking to cause a ruckus to put plainly there's a few different hello sir hello Sir? One. Who's the other guy? Hello. Hello, cousin. Suka. Suka dip. There he is. Alright, so there's a few different ways to actually traverse this area. Of course, if you're doing it like me and you're going to go full forehead, then, well, hopefully the scabs are slow to react. Um, otherwise you're not going to have a good time. So once again, uh, scavs are the AI, or what is considered the local, the locals in this war-torn area that we as PMCs are trying to survive. They got caught in the economic downturn and then um, combat while we are here uh, just trying to survive and quote unquote escape so you'll notice is that we're running and for those of you that are more um, directionally one of, one of competent oh my god Ask buns of steel buns of steel alright sorry about that ah! um, alright so you'll some of you may notice and now you should all notice that we're heading back towards the water the reason being is I wanted to make sure that we kind of circle back 
to show you guys. I call Shanty Bridge. They're all pretty much land bridge besides official bridge. And it's just to kind of put into full circle of where we are, the kind of loop that we did. So we're going to cross this bridge. And then we are going to... I'm going to show you guys Red Door, which I initially showed you guys, and then the blue on the side that we spawned on, and then Hobo Camp, and it's going to be, it's kind of a, the big circle that we've made. Beautiful. All right. So, you notice, you may remember when we initially crossed, we crossed train tracks. Uh, we've crossed those train tracks again, but now we're on the other side of Big Red. This is the side that we came to initially. So there's the first Big Blue that we came to. Big doors or red doors behind that um, that bush there. If we can get, if we can find the right angle on this hill here, we might be able to see it. there's like one of the scabs that we killed. So just to kind of put into perspective, oh, well, that's beautifully ironic. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of, that's the general location of uh, either side of the compound that is the Customs Trading House or Big Red, or however you want to call it. So, we're now going to undo all the things that we've done. We are going to walk around dorms. So, dorms in Big Red are and stronghold which is um, that big skeletal structure that i said we'll eventually get to that is they are the the main the big areas for pvp if you want to go someplace which either for a quest you gotta kill scabs you have to kill players if you're bored and you're walking around the map and you want to cause some trouble three spots that are pretty much guaranteed to get you some sort of action any sort of action. Yes, those... oh. Sir? Sorry about that. Alright. So, as you'll notice, I have my health bound to my keys so I can actually just press the number five. In the same way that you can switch two up and by pressing three or two, what have you. Also. What an ass. I don't know you like that. Beautiful. We got more mags, my favorite. Beautiful. Alright, so we can press. Uh, I'm pressing the number four, and that brings up what's colloquially re referred to as cheese. Because it looks like a, a slice of crap singles cheese for my fellow NA super race. And now all my health. Now that now that health unit is gone, but now my overall health is gone. Oh. So you'll notice is that now my right arm is blacked or zeroed, and that means that my my aim. If you see that, if you look at the weapon, it now starts to bob and weave. It's not just a stable platform, and it's more obvious when you aim down sight the fact that it's it's a less stable platform. Now you can take pain meds like uh, the augmented we have, or you can take painkillers or morphine. There's a lot of stimulants that you can take to counteract the the disadvantage of having a a broken or zeroed limb. So, the dorms is split into two parts. Now that we have finally arrived here, we have three story because it's got one, two, three stories, and the other is two story probably guess why it is called that so i like to enter in on this door on this side so this is first floor first floor dorms and then work my way up or north if i'm interested so we're, i typically skip second floor Check one side, check the other side. So the main reason to come here is for quests, but also all the way at the end here. 
there is a locked room which has the chance of spawning anything in the loot table. The only issue is that well, we don't have the key for it. Now there's also a balcony and from here you can hop down outside. There's a weapons crate to loot. Um, a lot, the majority of these rooms either don't have something, the locked rooms are the ones you really want to get to. One thing that you need to be painfully aware of when fighting in dorms, and it's really neat, is if you can now hop outside these windows. So if someone was camping this hallway and you were able to like push them back or suppress them, and you push through, you can flank them through the window, and now you can just go suck up there. You can surprise them, quote unquote. So it's something to be aware of that you can jump out windows that are not blocked, like this window right here. This is blocked. We can shoot through it, but we cannot get out of it. Something to be uh, aware of as you're fighting in dorms, because you will invariably have to. You can hop out most windows. You can throw grenades in and out. Um, if you can reach it, you can pretty much get to it. Hello? Sneaky beaky. So as you notice, um, a lot of this, there's, there's pretty much like this, actually, this is, this is perfect. See how this item and both of these items are gray? Now I know it was Azaria because I played Tarkov probably more than is healthy. Um, and I knew this was Crackers because I play this game in exorbitant amount. Your player may not know what that is or doesn't know what that is for some silly reason. So the fastest way to discover items is just by using your middle mouse. Now if you yet yeah, that's not intuitive to you, you can always right click on the item and then press examine. There's always a contextual menu, but there is a hotkey for that if that is uh, if you really super care. So this is two this is second floor, third story dorm. There's really two rooms here that are good. It's uh, 204 and 214. Yeah, 214 and then 204. They both have uh, safes in them. Now, of course, you'll need to come here for some quests and stuff like that. So you will be on second floor dorms quite often. Third floor is really only for um, marked room. So and then if we boogie across and we beat feet across to two story dorms, it's actually uh, probably pretty similar. It's not terribly surprising, though, is it? Um, all right. So the only thing that's different is that on that side, there's a few safes uh, that you need keys for behind the locked rooms. Um, otherwise, two-story probably has better loot because the majority of the rooms will have uh, a gym bag or a weapons crate, a jacket or two or something. So two-story is typically better looting. Third story, you're going to better PvP, usually. Um, if you're looking for keys to make money here, 110 and 114 are both have safes. You'll also need the 206 key for a quest pretty early on. It's Operation Aquarius for Therapist. It's right there. So, what I prefer to do when I'm in two story, um, leaving the doors is usually not the best idea, but. If you go into first floor bathroom, you open up this door, you can hop out the red window, then click your heels three times. If I can jump, here we go. And now we're outside on the other side of two story dorms without having to bother um, anything. So, when the only issue coming and going at a two story dorms like that, there are a lot of almost every single player on customs that spawns on the opposite side of the map, the side that we're going to, um, either will go the new area or they rotate through here. So this hill, whatever you want to call it, I've heard some people call it hill two. Um, there's a camp over here, so you could be like camp hill. It's, it's usually full of players that are traversing the map either in, into, into you or in your direction, so, or with you. So this is camp. I've seen backpacks spawn here. There is a um, flash drive spawn there, flash drive spawn there, and a gym bag for good measure. 
Oh, that was scope. What the heck? Oh, pack of milk. You guys are thirsty. Cool. So, in almost entirely in line with two-story dorms, there's an area called bus station. So, bus station or bus depot um, is a uh, bus depot. There's a lot of derelict like, buses here. I will normally rotate through two bus here, and then from there I decide whether or not I want to go to construction or if I want to go to dorms. If I want to go to the new area or to where, where we just were. It's a short run. It's pretty easy to defend. Now, of course, it's a big area, but it's worth it. Now, the area that we ran through to get here, um, I myself would have a call out. I've heard other content creators uh, call this sticks and stones, and I kind of like it because, you know, sticks and stones. It's pretty obvious. So, yeah. So, from here, we're pretty much going to rotate to new gas. The reason why I say new gas is, well, I guess it's pretty obvious. If there is a new, there is an old kind of thing. So, we're going to go to new gas because that's what logically makes the most sense being on this side of this side of the map. So, we kind of just ran straight forward from Sticks and Stones to another train line. And this gives us a decent overlook on to new gas. This is one of the locations in which uh, Rishala, or the, the map boss, can spawn. Um, the map boss on any map that has a map boss has around a 33% chance of spawning. And he has three spawns. One at Stronghold, which we haven't seen. It's the skeletal area. The other is New Gas here. And then the third is Dorms. Now, Dorms is split up between two-story and three-story, so you kind of never know if you're going to see him. Where you're going to see them, and sometimes it's a little annoying. So, gas station has a crap ton of cars to check. The nice thing about it, to be honest, is that there can be stuff that spawns on these kind of like, eh, well, that's already that's already used on the store shelves. We can come in here, and we can, if we have a key, we can get a safe. If we have a different key, we can get some meds. We can search for weapon parts. It's it's nice to round out your collection, whatever it is that you have. That's how I see it. And this side door has food spawns here, and then we have a gym bag here. All in all, not bad. Typically, you'll fight players here, or you'll fight... Um, Normal scabs. On occasion, you will have and and or Rishala. On occasion, you'll have the perfect storm of all three, and it's a gigantic cluster. One thing to remember is that if you see a till, search the till for money. It's free real estate. It's free real estate. So as you can see, you search it. It goes into your pouch, your alpha slash gamma container, and now you are all that money richer. Cool. And now this is the backside. So the backside is usually where you're going to die the most, at least in my personal experience. On an online or in a, in a real run, these this hill, that rock line, is full of people that are watching this area waiting for players, Rishala, scabs. Typically, you want to enter in the back and exit the front if you can do it. Otherwise, I would enter front and leave the front and then go up the sides of some sort. Leaving the back, leaving going out, out the back is usually a recipe for disaster. Hello. Hello, cousin. Drop, drop, shot. Me, you son of a... Right. Cool. So now we are speaking of being on that hill. This is what that vantage point kind of looks like. Sniper scab? No. So this is what that vantage point typically looks like. You have a very nice view of this area and then also construction. Speaking of nice view, there's a scab that we just saw. Higao. The Higao. 
Um, and then from there, you also can have a decent view over in towards, uh, that's called the factory area. So, above here we have power. And then when it comes to, my friends and I call it power because, you know, power. Um, there is a key that spawns here that's worth a little bit of money for the for labs. Uh, this is a med spawn, so obviously med spawns are good because we will always need meds, and also meds will make us money. Weapon parts and magazines will spawn here. There is a weapon box here that can spawn weapon parts and ammo and guns. So the reason why I made that space, I'll put this back. So the reason why I made a space here is if I don't have an a available slot for that mag to read index into or go back into, that mag drops at my feet. So it's always a good idea to keep your single slot items together as much as you possibly can so that you can have a slot for your magazine. It'll It'll only go into your tactical rig. It will not go into your backpack. And we have another weapons box here as well. Oh, not bad. Beautiful. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to kind of follow the curvature of the map. As you notice, there's that kind of wall there. So we're gonna basically head to that wall and then go to our right. It naturally kind of curves you towards the factory portion of the map. So this is the logical line that, that I follow. Now, there is, there's a shorter way, there's a shortcut, but it's out, of, out, of, out in the open to the direction we are going. But we are not gonna do that. Not what I recommend, at least initially. So. This is called a checkpoint. There is a key that's required for a non-mandatory quest. It's got some weapon potential weapon spawns, ammo spawns, grenade spawns. The key sells for a lot to therapists, so you find one for the quest, and the rest you just kind of sell. It's like 114k rules. It's stupid for how much money it is. So, up in the watchtower besides making me think of Jimi Hendrix, there is uh, one of the five sniper scads on the map. Um, shoot them. You usually have a long range rifle or a night vision or both. I mean, when in doubt, shoot scav, but sniper scavs especially. Beautiful. So now from here, we can run straight down Main Street There's weapon parts and ammo and food and stuff that's here. Speaking of which, I actually could use a drink. And then in here, you can find a toolbox, which will have a lot of lootables you'll need for your hideout and for quests. If you see magazines inside this red container, my recommendation is you take the ammo out of them. They typically have good ammo in them. I've done a very good job at finding good ammo in here. Beautiful. So we've got two directions that we can go. We can go into the factory zone, or we can stay left and then continue around to what logically would be our extract. It's ZV, it should be ZV 1011. Should be CP1011. But we're obviously going to go to the right because, you know, who doesn't want more loot? So up here, there's a few different doors uh, for us to go into. We can either wrap around here and go inside this main factory building proper. Or we can go through this door, which the scav had already opened up for us because they are oh so kind. So we're just going to go up to the top floor because we don't have much of an option. And so in here, this first room is going to have ammo. It's going to have uh, food. Maybe some, some loot items. Uh, from there, this bed will have either beds of some sort or ammo of some sort. 
Um, this is the toilet mannequin. I, I don't know if that's blood or poop, and I don't want to know. Sometimes he has uh, a, a rare item on his arm, so that's always worth checking. In this next room, there's a lot of uh, random loose loot, but it's always good to check because gasoline is something that you're going to need. Um, there's weapon parts and mods around here and food. And it's good to check. So you'll notice is that clock in the top right hand corner is counting down. That means that this this run is going to end in nine minutes and ten seconds. Now nine seconds and then eight seconds. So coming into this last room here, uh, rare items can spawn there. This is a chainlet. It's not really doesn't make you, doesn't make you much money. All right. So from here you can have uh, basically random loose stuff. Uh, jackets can spawn keys of any variety. Usually they're good keys. Now on to this next one here. Or before we go up the next set of stairs, uh, we have weapon spawns and loose loot spawns. It's always good. It's kind of one of those where it's always good to check to fill out the rest of your, your, your inventory. Beautiful. So in here, this is where you can make actually quite a bit of coinage. Uh, these computers can spawn spot things that you need for um, for quests. They can also spawn things that you can also spawn GPUs, which are expensive, and it'll, it'll make you money passively. It's always good to check. Um, inside the bathroom, there's a coat. Now inside the storeroom, there's one, two... Yeah, there's two toolboxes, but every single one of these, um, everything here can spawn something that you could use. And obviously there's, there's, there's a med spawn here. So it's one of those where it's great to check. Cool. So that's the main factory area or the, there's like three, there's like four factory buildings. So this next one, we'll just go that way. So this next building, uh, there's two weapon boxes to check. There's uh, Fred to check. Never know what Fred's going to have for you. Ooh. Nice tea, I think. Oh, I didn't mean to discard that. Fair enough. Uh, there's uh, more random lootables that, 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 that can spawn. We have our uh, toolbox. The big thing is right here, there can be a factory key spawn, which will make you some money. So that's something to all actually always check, not just a, that's something to go out of your way to check. And so up top here is uh, one of the two we weapon boxes. So let's go drink this. We're gonna go show you, show you how to get to the other one. The other one is, is, for some odd reason, kind of baffles me, like initially. It's only up one set of stairs as, as opposed to two. And you can have weapon bonds, weapon anything that, that can spawn in there. Cool. So, uh, we have this blue van. So this blue van is incredibly helpful because it has two PCs in them. So this building, this guy is right next to uh, our what 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 is typically our exit. So this building, this bunker entrance right here, this is ZV 10, 10 11. If you spawned where we did all those many many minutes ago, this would be your extract. You go down, timer times, and you're like, okay, cool, I'm out. But for us, and because offline is difficult, we'd have to backtrack, but we ain't gonna make it there in time. So this next building is actually really nice. Besides having a cool mural, this place can have a lot of different ammo, a lot of different mod, like a lot of different mods, it's pretty cool. So you see this, this crate that we walked up to and now we're searching? There's three different types of them. There's technical supply crates, there's medical supply crates, and then there's food supply crates. 
Depending on which one you're searching, you can get some really, really, really good money-making uh, items. Technical supply crates are the ones that have the best chance of making you money. They're all worth checking, and you won't know without searching it. But, yeah. So, we've got two computers, a toolbox, um, two jackets, random loose loot like ammo and milk, cigarettes, and then we have a weapon box to search. So it's one of those, this is this side of the map, there's a lot of good searching that you can do. Not everything is, is useful or helpful, obviously, but it's typically a pretty good idea to do. Cool. And I'm just going to go treat this as if we are extracting. We have our fun timer and all of that. The absolute joy that it is. Cool, and our timer from now starts, basically it counts down from eight uh, down to zero, and then you extract. Simple. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed that um, or found that helpful. I know we kind of covered about two thirds of the map. Um, I wish we had more time, but literally we would not have made it through uh, to the new area and through all of the all of the stuff you can get there so we'll have to do that in a different kind of video like this where it's much more of a walkthrough and less of an essay um if you guys have any questions please feel free to at me on twitter and dm me on instagram um uh, at dabasaurus uh or obviously the videos is super helpful super keen um, otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next one. I stream Tarkov Monday through Friday about 5 p.m. Eastern to around 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern at twitch.tv slash Davosaurus. Obviously, there's a lot of other good content. I highly recommend that you watch multiple just to kind of get it a feel for the game. But Tarkov is very different in that specific regard. It's very player dependent. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.